Welcome back team to the final analysis of BMW's F900 GS. Today, I'm gonna go a little harder on it just to see how good this suspension actually is standard. I know already it's on the soft side for me and, and the way I'm testing it, but that all comes back to getting that base platform ready for loading up with luggage and you know making it as safe as it can be for remote travel proper adventure right so yeah we'll get straight into it i'll start with the fork i'm not going to alter any of the geometry the fork height everything seemed perfect there's only so much i can do with these tires and i know that that's um it's actually limiting the bike but we'll see if we can get a bit more feel and just firm it up a bit i think it'll allow for a bit more aggressive cornering so to speak okay let's hook in interesting that shower have gone for individual compression rebound so one forks dedicated to compression one to rebound not really a fan well let's just crank it up see where it was at yeah, there's not much more i can do just gone in so it was seven clicks out from full hard i'm not going to go all the way just go three more so I'm four out from full hard, not ideal. It really needs stiffer springs for me. Um, rebound, I'm just gonna, based off yesterday's ride, I'm just gonna speed it up a touch just to try and get it to follow the ground a bit quicker because I could feel that front wanting to let go on entry to corners. And it's just the tire. They're a very dual sporty thing. <clears throat> okay, uh, it was a little bit booty in the bum on some of the kickers, so. Have we got high and low speed here? I believe we do. Okay. 10 on the low speed. Six out on the high speed. Too bad, I'll just, just two, just gone in two on the rebound. Yeah, all right, we'll run with that today. I'll tell you what, you want to be on your game with the traction control switched off, Jesus. What's going on with the ABS? Can I switch the ABS off? Does anyone know? How do I switch off ABS? I can switch off traction control. Am I allowed to switch it off? Settings. How do I go in there? That's what I want to know. How do I get in there? Whatever. Oh, rats. Oops, caught the brake pedal on that rut back there. That was a bit deep. Sorry, Beamer. Good as gold. Perfect center of gravity. <laughs> just proved it right there. A little overcooked. I just threw her into those ruts. And you know, sometimes the momentum of these things, you can't get the exact line you want, especially when you're on uh, dual sporty tires. She handled that scenario very, very well. A lesser bike would have ejected me quite hard. 
Where's the trail gone? Here it is. Yeah, that traction control is helping with this tyre. Got it. Bit wonky, but I got it. She's struggling. Um, you know, I'm kind of limited to, let's be honest, the way you can ride an adventure bike is governed by the tyres. Pretty good, apart from the usual tower clunk that literally every adventure bike gets, it's not bad. That was a fair old country send. Cleared the gap without a fuss, really. It's funny, you know, in an off-road sense, it's got way too much horsepower, but as soon as you get it into a bit of a, dare I say, motocross situation, it's kind of somehow usable. Very capable, but um, she needs stiffer springs for this kind of carry-on. They've definitely got this package right in terms of just the off-road performance. As a base platform to do all the right things off-road, you can't really fault it. You can only make it better and better. For me, it needs stiffer spring. Well, it doesn't. I'd, you'd definitely put a stiffer rear in when the luggage goes on. Uh, firming up the compression, um, really stabilise the front. I could push into the corners a lot harder today. I did mention before, I, I feel like they, BMW, have had a bit of a sinister plan. And I don't know what the forums are saying. Again, I, I don't really care, to be honest. But the feel I get from this bike, it's like they're targeting the 890, KDM's 890R, just with the horsepower specs. Um, the good thing is, is that they've created this horsepower cap and then made it all usable and realistic for their customer base with the electronics. And to be honest, it sort of has that 890R sound. They're actually, they've got some, some very loose tolerances in there. And while at idle, it's a bit like, whoa, it's a brand new bike. You kind of get the understanding of the RPM and the horsepower that, it's, that it can achieve. It's like, whoa, it sort of smooths out street bike style the harder you rev it. How that stacks up for longevity, who knows? You, these things have just come out. I don't know what kind of duration people are getting out of the older Beamers. Again, I'm not really interested in that. I just think from BMW creating this model, let's forget about everything in the past to just go, boom, here's our 900cc adventure entry. It's a pretty serious bike you know and um, if you were to customize it even better what I don't like about it and, and and I have this problem with the entire the majority of the adventure bike um, model range across the board all manufacturers is this what do you call it stressed member frame um, you know like not that you're gonna pay all this money for one of these things and go jumping it but Let's face it, when you load it up with luggage and you hit the outback, there's some massive washouts and G-outs that you've got no option but to case them at like 100k an hour, you know, depending on what, how you're traveling. And there's so much vulnerability under here. If this were my bike, I'd piss these crash bars off straight away because they bolt directly into the engine cases. So you, and, and they seem pretty strong and that's the problem. They, they need to be a lot softer to just mush in and then like be a, a one hit throw away. But if they're really strong, they, you're gonna snap these engine cases out if you go down. So what I would be doing, and there's, there's so much facility here, right? I would be, someone should get onto making proper crash bar system for this and you can actually 
triangulate the the frame so mount off here protect the exhaust run up and then hook in bolt back in because this looks like the actual main it looks like the actual main frame here so you know it's not the end of the world that it's got an exposed sump because if you're serious about off-road adventure and and strengthening the underbelly it looks like there's facility there to create a pretty good um, custom crash bar system for this bike and she'd take a pounding then that's it that's my only gripe about this bike otherwise far out they've nailed it it's interesting you know like th this whole adventure bike media game there's manufacturers coming in left right and center with the latest greatest adventure bike right and the i feel the industry's in all sorts it's a frenzy at the moment the adventure bike thing and and the problem is is you've got these upstart manufacturers that are effectively copying all the big hitters, copying your Yamahas, your KDMs, your Beamers, you know, just taking all of what they like, regurgitating the designs, making them out of cheap materials, and then flogging these adventure bikes for like near on half the price. And the adventure bike game is so big now and people are flooding in, they don't know any different. They're just like, oh, I can get that for 10, 15 grand, whatever. I'm in and I can't help but feel it's putting a lot of pressure on the real deal manufacturers to they're forced to like cut corners and try and save money to bring make their bikes more affordable and it's not what adventure's about you know like you don't want a one night stand with an adventure bike right you want a wife you want to travel the world on these things you want to hang on to it you want to get to know it and form a long term partnership with it and I just can't see that happening with a lot of these new new adventure bikes that are just appearing you know there's a new one every second week it seems for my core off-road audience I would support the bigger manufacturers you know I'd, I'd I'd save another five grand I'd save another eight grand and just go back and do your research and look at the brands that have been out there building these things and putting in the K's and got a parts base, got a, you know, they've just got R&D based in from, from, look at Dakar. Wind the clock back to Dakar and look at the manufacturers that were out there doing the Ks on, on bikes that were stemmed from, you know, you got Beamer, Kato, Honda, Yamaha. Look at the model names, you know, like, don't be fooled into these cheap Johnny Come Lately adventure bikes I'd, I'd save a bit more money and and you know let's let, let's stand by the the original brands and and try and keep that quality because they can only do what they can do when all this sh junk is just <laughs> coming out anyway that's enough about that that's a massive can of worms but whatever no nah, thanks beamer i didn't break it she didn't break it's a sick bike um yeah don't forget to like and share this video hit the subscribe button and yeah got a pretty crazy adventure coming up next with another manufacturer stay tuned